So I've been wanting to do a video for quite some time on cardiac rhythms. A lot of people have been asking me to, to load one up. So fortunately, I've got uh, photos by Raphael, who's actually helping me out uh, with the video production for the cardiac arrhythmias. And he happens to be a clinician himself. So it's actually been really helpful. So uh, big thanks to him. So I want to start off by talking about normal sinus rhythm first. So with all these cardiac rhythms, we're going to be using a lead to rhythm, which really just does involve just three leads. So we'll put the white one on the right, we'll put the black one, which is smoke, over the red one, which is fire. And that'll give us a lead to capture of, a, uh, of an ECG for ECG monitoring. And you can see here, if all things go well, we're gonna have a normal sinus rhythm. What makes this a normal sinus rhythm? It's the P waves. So this P wave uh, is, is actually articulated very well here, and then you've got a QRS complex and a T wave. So just moving on from the uh, ECG chat video that I posted up that some of you may have seen, I just wanna move on, um, and I guess I just wanna just revise what we talked about when we actually went over that. Okay, so you may recognize this drawing from that ECG chat. This is the four chambers of the heart. This is the right side and this is the left side. So in the right atrium, we've got your sinoatrial node that's going to fire off electricity. When it fires off electricity, it's gonna to go to the atrioventricular node. And the atrioventricular node is situated between, of course, the atriums and the ventricles. And so this actual electrical event of the sinoatrial node reaching the atrioventricular node is going to look like this. So that is this, and that's a P wave. And after that, we're gonna get electrical currents, two actually going down the left side because the left ventricle is much bigger, and then one going down the right. And we'll get that QRS complex, and then we'll get our T wave to reset. Okay, so that's normal. This is how it should look. So I just wanna show you another rhythm now, just to start it, to, to sink our teeth into some rhythms that aren't particularly normal. Now this is actually quite subtle. So if you have a look at this first rhythm that we looked at, and then you look at this rhythm now, you'll be able to see some P waves. And I'm sure that some of you have already been able to determine now that these P waves are a little bit further away from the QRS complex. And this is known as a prolonged PR interval. And a lot of people will actually refer to this as an atrioventricular block. So with atrioventricular block, I guess I just wanna show you what an atrioventricular block sort of um, looks like on one of my funky little diagrams. So instead of the QRS complex <coughs> being initiated straight away from the AV node, what's happening in an atrioventricular block is that there's a delay there's a delay, and then we're gonna get our QRS complex. And that's known as an atrioventricular block. Now, why this happens, there's quite a few reasons why this could happen. It could be electrolyte imbalance, it could be leftover from injury and remodeling, say, from a myocardial infarction, or sometimes you may get um, a congenital defect or just a, a growth defect um, in your heart that can actually cause some of these arrhythmias. So the next one I wanted to sort of show you was this. And there's a couple of features about this particular rhythm that I'm sure you've already picked up. The QRS complexes are beautiful and they look exactly the same. But if you have a second look, you can actually see that they're spaced irregularly apart. If you actually did a radial pulse just during your normal observations, taking a pulse rate, when you've done it for a while, you can actually feel the irregularity and you can actually feel this being irregular. So you've also picked up too, I'm sure, that there's no P waves that are occurring here. So there's no P waves that's related to the QRS complexes. And this is known as atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation is actually quite a common arrhythmia. Um, I actually have a medical student that um, does suffer from um, atrial fibrillation from time to time. So I just want to explain what atrial fibrillation actually is. So with atri uh, inside your right atrium, you have atrial foci, and they're these cells that can also 
deliver some electricity. You also have atrial foci in your superior vena cava and your inferior vena cava as well, but that's not really important right now. So what happens is that your atrial foci in a normal heart does nothing, it just sits there, right? But when the sinoatrial node doesn't fire off for whatever reason, as, as previously discussed before, the atrial foci start to fire off electricity. And when the atrial foci start to take over, it's quite chaotic. It's kind of like, I don't know if you've seen Finding Nemo before, but if you haven't, there's this scene where all these seagulls are on the beach. And even if you haven't seen Finding Nemo, I'm sure that you can relate to that sort of randomness of all these seagulls. So these, these atrial foci will be firing off electricity. And let's just say this one fires off some electricity. Just like in Finding Nemo, you'll get this mine, right? Hits the atrioventricular node and we get our QRS uh, complex happening. And then this other one might go mine, 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 just like in that Finding Nemo movie. And then we'll get another atrioventricular response giving us a QRS complex. Now, can you see that the distance from this atrial foci to the AV node is different to this, as it is to this and all these other ones. So when these uh, atrial foci are firing off randomly, we're actually going to get an irregular beat as represented in atrial fibrillation. Now, treatment of atrial fibrillation um, requires some sort of cardioversion. And when I say cardioversion, a lot of my students think I'm referring to electrocardioversion. But there's also a chemical cardioversion that can work quite successfully. And if it doesn't work, if we don't wake up that sinoatrial node, then we'll have to revert to something a little bit more drastic, such as electrocardioversion. So the next rhythm I want to show you is, um, is this one. And I don't know if you can see any P waves here, but really these are all P waves. So unlike this where there was no P waves, there's just too many bloody P waves here. So what's happening is the SA node is just, just firing off like a machine gun. And the AV node, the AV node isn't responding to all of them because if it was, we're probably gonna get a tachycardia over well over 200 beats per minute. And when you get something that rapid, you're not gonna get any ventricular filling that's gonna be able to deliver some oxygenated blood around the body to provide the body with that organ tissue support because that's what the cardiac function is really all about. So this rhythm here is known as an atrial flutter. So that's that SA node is just fluttering out of control. So this is atrial flutter. So I'm also gonna show you another um, couple of rhythms that you'll encounter when you're actually doing some cardiac monitoring. And this is known, and we call them here in Australia, a ventricular ectopic beat usually, or a VEB. So you can see that this ventricular ectopic beat is on its own. So what we've got here is that we've got a beautiful normal sinus rhythm. Okay, so we've got P waves, QRS complexes, P, QRS, T, and then we've got this, it's almost like a hiccup. Okay, this large ventricular ectopic beat. Have you ever sat down and actually felt that maybe you've had some palpitations? It's actually happened to me once before here. I rushed to the cardiac monitor and I couldn't capture it. But what that could be is it could be some random ventricular ectopic beats that are occurring. They're benign. They're benign on their own and they're quite normal to happen on their own. And you can see that this is also a ventricular ectopic beat, but it just looks a little bit different. Um, the explanation for these, like I guess my understanding of it could be maybe some uh, electrical activity left over in the Purkinje, Purkinje fibres that are just randomly firing off. Um, but this becomes a real problem if you have too many ventricular ectopic beats firing off. So this, this uh, rhythm here, you can actually see a pattern of ventricular ectopic beats happening every second normal cycle. And this is known as a ventricular bigeminy. Why? Because it's happening every second beat. So it makes sense then that if I showed you this rhythm strip here, where it's happening every three, that is a ventricular trigeminy. But this is actually where it becomes quite concerning. When we get ventricular ectopic beats, that are starting to bunch up, that couple up now. 
that's when we're actually going to be having runs of ventricular tachycardia. Now, I do really need to point out what ventricular tachycardia looks like because from a student point of view, we're always asking you guys about, you know, tell us about the shockable rhythms. And the two rhythms that we are asked to really point out to you are, is, is one of these, okay, it's ventricular tachycardia. So what's normally happening here, if I was to try to sort of replicate this electrical event into a mechanical event, and this hands the atriums, and this hands the ventricles, what would happen is that we'd get this P, Q, R, S, T, P, Q, R, S, T, P, Q, R, S, T, and then we're gonna get runs of ventricular tachycardia. There's no atrial activity. So what's happening there is that we're assuming that the patient's cardiac output is actually quite poor. There is a uh, thing, it's quite rare, where you can have a conscious VT, and ventricular tachycardia looks like this, okay? So a prolonged run of ventricular tachycardia looks like this. So usually patients are unconscious with this, and we are assuming that there's no cardiac output. I do remember looking after two patients, actually, that had what we call conscious ventricular tachycardia, or conscious VT, where I just remember the guy was eating breakfast, and I was setting up to actually get some emergency sort of teams to come and really sort of look after this patient. And I remember the patient just sort of saying, look, can we do this after breakfast? And I was thinking to myself, well, you better enjoy that breakfast because it could be your last one. But uh, things turned out quite well for that patient, um, but they don't always turn out well for patients in VT. So the next rhythm I wanted to show you was this. This is the other shockable rhythm. And the other shockable rhythm is known as VF. So where in VT we've got this happening and no atrial activity, in VF we've got this. And the difference in the movement of my hand is representing poor cardiac output. This rhythm here, we are actually looking at you doing CPR. Um, when we do simulation, I actually put uh, our sim man into a VF and we time how long it takes for the student to actually commence CPR. So I guess like there's lots of other videos out there when it comes to sort of cardiac arrhythmias and all the rest of it. And I'd like to encourage you to look for them um, out there. There's some great videos on YouTube and these are some of the ones that I just wanted to uh, go over with you, particularly the shockable rhythms. But just remember that atrial fibrillation is also a shockable rhythm as well too. So um, you could also say that there's three. But anyway, thanks for actually supporting the channel and I look forward to delivering you some more content soon.